Guys, I want to get into a little topic with you today here, just on selling, kind of a sales one-on-one talk today, on what to do when the client says they're already covered. Now, this is one that comes up all the time, but I really want you to think through this objection because it's probably one of the most common objections we face every single day. I've already got that taken care of. I'm insurance poor. I don't need any more. I've got enough. Now, what's going on in the client's mind here? Maybe they truly do have enough, but I'm going to share with you my view on it and how I think about it differently. Many of you guys have probably seen the movie The Matrix, and what's great about The Matrix is when when it's revealed, you know, what the matrix is, you know, the one, Neil, can see it for what it really is. I feel like that's how I am when I go in these homes. You know, if I can use that metaphor, you know, I feel like it's the matrix. You know, I'm being told something, but what I see is different. What's really going on under the surface is something else, okay? <clears throat> Clients will tell you, insurance poor, broke, don't have any money, change of mind, not interested. Oftentimes, they do think they have enough. You guys, this is where the battle is lost or won right here. You have to decide right in that moment, you're going to sell them or you're not. A lot of agents give up in that moment. These are the thoughts that go through their minds. Well, I probably should just move on to a better lead. Yeah, they probably do have enough. They probably don't have enough money to buy anymore. I'll bet you I can't beat what they have. Those are the thoughts that go through a new agent's mind, probably less on a more um, seasoned producer. Those are thoughts, and you've got to put those down, okay? Put them down hard. Because here's what goes through my mind. You know what? I bet they've got a term life. I'll bet they don't know what they actually have is, ter- or, uh, is, uh, is a universal life. I'll bet that they don't realize they took a loan on their policy and they've actually substantially reduced the benefit amount and they're being charged interest. I'll bet you they've got a lot of cash value that they're not going to get to take with them when they pass. They could probably use that right now. And on and on it goes. Here's one I really want to hone in on today, and this is really important, guys. Uh, The cost of everything is going up. I read an article this week. Uh, I believe it was eggs and milk, especially right now, is up like 15 to 18% in the grocery store. You know, I mean, hey, could have told you that was going to happen. You, you put, you know, what, $9 trillion into the economy, uh, printing money. <laughs> it's another topic, but your dollar's not going to go as far um, as it used to. But, you know, this problem is going to continue to arise. Things are going to continue to go up, and people are on Facebook panicking, and it's ridiculous. Food's going up, and and again, the reason is is not the problem. The fact is, things go up in cost, <clears throat> and stuff is going up substantially right now. Food is going up a lot, and so what else is going up in life? See, I would use that conversation in every home. Man, I would sit down during my warm up. I would talk about the cost of food, Miss Betty. I can't believe what food is doing. Man, I got six kids, and the cost of eggs is at 15% higher. Now, you think I really care about I don't care about the cost of eggs. I make a lot of money, being transparent with you guys. I don't care about the cost of gas. Very rarely do I look at the cost on a menu. But that's not most of America. Be real here. It's not. Most of America does look at the price of everything. And it is very expensive, and it is going up. And I was raised poor, and I know exactly what that's like, okay, before you judge me, (laughs) all right? So what do you do, man? Have that conversation. I go blue-collar every time. I'm very good at being blue-collar because I was blue-collar, just being real. And I talk to clients. I'm like, man, everything's going up, and the cost of funerals is going up, and here's a a stat you can throw out there. Miss Betty, did you know the cost of funerals is going up 9% a year on average? That's a national statistic. Look it up. Oh, really? So if your client is covered today, realistically, they may have not needed coverage today. 
They may not need coverage right at this moment. They might feel completely secure and genuinely want to push you away. But see, great salespeople don't care about that. Great salespeople find and develop needs. Do you understand that? Guys, I, I talk about this a lot, and some of you probably get tired of hearing it, but I'm telling you there's only so many areas of final expense insurance you can cover. And at the end of the day, it comes down to your sales ability. And this is huge to convert people. You know, we've talked before about the, the 20%. You know, that'll never buy, the 20 that always will, and the 60 in the middle. How good are you? This is converting that 60, turning them into a deal. Things that I would mention is, Miss Betty, you know, the cost is going up 9% a year. And let's just fast forward here. Right now you're 60. Let's fast forward. You know, women today are living into their 80s. How old your mama lived to? Oh, she was 90. Wow. Great genes in your family, Ms. Betty. I'm glad you got whole life, you know. We need to make sure we stay with that, you know. Joke around. Have some fun with people. But in that sense there, mention you're not going to have enough. Ask them. Say, you know, 30 years ago, Miss Betty, what did the cost of, what was a Cadillac? What did it cost? Or, you know, what did a quarter buy you? Let your clients sell themselves. Ask these questions. They're great icebreakers, but they also open up the door. You know what's going to happen? Your client's going to say, well, here's what something used to cost. You know, I'm, I'm fairly young compared to most of our customers. And so when I ask these questions, I am shocked sometimes at what things used to cost, what gas used to cost when they were my age, you know, when they were 20. And you can use that to say, what do you think the cost of funerals will be 20 years from now? And here's what I think we should do, Miss Betty. If I was you, I would add an additional... 5000 just in case. It's guaranteed. It's locked in. It's just like your other whole life. It's never going to change. It's permanent coverage, okay? It's going to pay your family, you know, and they're probably going to need it because the cost keeps rising. This is planning for the future, the inevitable. You know, we don't want your kids to come out of pocket at the end, do we? No. See, guys, there are many, many situations where I walk into a house and I see business cards I see brochures around. I see things. Agents came in. They did presentations. But see, the difference in their presentation and mine was they said, hey, I work for X company. I have all these great life insurance plans. These are fantastic. It's whole life. What do you think? And that's their presentation. So they're, they're, they're presenting whole life, and they're getting some coverage out there because some people do just want to buy. But then in reality, they're missing the hard ones. They're missing sales. See, we're called salespeople. I'm not offended by that whatsoever. I am a heck of a salesman, okay? That means you've got to learn to sell. Okay, study this stuff. It's a learned behavior. So, look, I hope you got something out of today's training. Um, we're just going back to the basics of selling techniques and, and how to get this thing done. You got more questions, more specific uh, to this topic, hit me up. We'll talk about it.